Hi guys, I'm here to tell you about the, um, the game project for the Constitution. Um, I wanted to make a video so that if you had any questions, you can always go back and watch the video. So this is the product descriptor for the game project. And basically what it is, you are going to be creating a game to help you study for the Constitution. Um, the game can be completely a made up game, or you can base it off of a game that you already know. So for example, this game, they call it Constitutional Casualty. This one is obviously based off of checkers or chess, but they still made their own game for it. Um, this one, Constitution Trivia, is based off of the game, sorry. So um, you can base it off of a game. Now this one, they just put it on you know, like a canvas. The other one, they made it out of construction paper. Um, some students like to put it, take like an older game. Obviously, ask your parents first if it's a game that you don't play anymore, and they'll take the game board from that and just cover it with their own game board. Um, obviously, the point of the game is to help you uh, study for the Constitution. So the design, as it says for the first part of the product descriptor, it, it can be modeled off an existing game or it can be your own, but the question cards are obviously the most important. So you need to have at least 50 question cards. And I know you're thinking, oh my gosh, this is so much. I can't believe there's 50. But if you think about it, for the first um, quiz, you had 20 questions. For the second one, you have about 20 questions. There's 40 questions right there, and that's just for articles one and two. And you want to make sure that you are covering it to study the whole Constitution. So you already have 20 questions that you know are going to be on the test right there. Um, so you want to make sure that you're using questions that are going to be on the test. You're not just picking random questions like what's the fifth word in the Constitution or something like that. Although that, I guess, is on the test for the preamble if you want to do that for extra credit. But you know what I mean. Like You're not just picking, you know, random, like the hundredth word of the Constitution. So on your questions, you need to make sure that you provide the answers. They should be the correct answers. Um, it should be relevant to the unit. So you're not talking about something else. Um, like Spongebob or whatever. You're not talking random things. You're only talking about the Constitution. And it should help you study for the test, and it should cover the entire document. So you want to make sure that you have questions about the Bill of Rights and the amendments in there as well. So for questions, um, several what a lot of students do is they will put it on index cards, and they will then you know, either write out their question, and they'll put the answer right on there, or um, they will also put it on, let's see if I have them here. They will have their questions on one, on one card. So this one, they have the question on this card, and it has a number, and then they have an answer sheet that has all the answers on there. Ooh, answer cheat sheet, this one's called. On this one, again, they used the computer program and just typed it all out. So either way that you do it is fine, but part of that is helping you review for the test as well. So um, making the question cards is a, obviously one of the most important parts of, the, of this project. Okay, directions. So the directions need to be clear and concise. You need to be able to, like students are going to be playing these games in the room, and they need to be able to understand how to play the game without you actually being there saying, oh, no, that's not what I meant. I mean, when you open up Monopoly, the little Monopoly guy doesn't come out and be like, oh, you're supposed to do this. Oh, you're not supposed to do this. It's You understand it by reading the directions. So you want to make sure your directions are clear and concise. They should be understandable. Even if you're not there, they should be realistic, and they should be fair to everyone. Okay? Um, materials. You need to include all the materials to play the game. So if you um, have moving pieces, you need to have the moving pieces in there. And they don't have to be anything crazy. Like you could have paper clips, different color paper clips. You can have little pieces of um, model magic that's color, different colors. You could borrow pieces from another game that you have at your house, asking your parents first, of course. Um, I do have some extra game pieces in the classroom, so if you don't have access to different game pieces, I have game pieces you can borrow as well. If you say that you need to roll a die, the die should be included. Um, it should all be there so that you can play the game. Last but not least, your game should be in a box. Okay, so here's a game. It's in a box. Um, this is like a Carson's box. You can do it like that. Um, some students, if they use a previously made game, or I'm sorry, a, like an older game where they took the board from an older game, they just covered up the board of that game because they don't use it anymore. So that's another option for you. Um, here you can see this one is a Carson's box. Carson's.com. So you, you just need to have it in some kind of container. Now 
some students like to create games that are on like a poster board type thing and that's fine but then you need to have it in like a garbage bag or something so that all the pieces stay together um, another thing now that we have computers some students like to create computer games and that I'm okay with as well um, just obviously come talk to me about it first but um, in that case then you wouldn't need to have a box because it's on your computer so I hope this um, explains what you need to have for your project um, this is not going to be due for a little while. I'm going to post it on my website when it is due. Um, it'll be close to when the Constitution test is taking place. We will be playing these games in class to review. And um, I just I want you to have fun. I don't want you to um, be stressed about this, but you do need to work on it a little bit each night so that it doesn't become overwhelming at the end. But you have several weekends in there, you know, coming up. So if you'd rather work on it on the weekend than during the week, that's okay too. Um, but this will really help you prepare for the Constitution test. Okay, 